everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is April 6, 2023, and I am back, re-emerged from this void I've been in uh, the last couple of weeks. So uh, how's everyone doing? The energy after the equinox is a, uh, it's a lot, uh, but I think each of us are getting more attuned. We've done a lot of work and we're all shifting at our own individual level, right? So uh what we experience may be very different from what our family experienced and i do feel like working with uh moldavite there's glitches in a reality like one day you wake up and it feels like we're in a different reality okay things missing and disappearing that happens often and so today's episode i want to talk about palisite by the way heaven wants to join in say hi heaven Okay, so uh, let's talk about Palisite. So this is a new uh, meteorite that has recently resonated into my energy field. And so I have this 89 gram piece. It didn't come through until I finished my last activation in uh, with the Moldavites in Mexico. And that's for the sacral energy. So uh, for those who don't know, I been into this Moldavite intensely the last five years and taking different sets of 12 down to um, into different vortexes, right, high vibrational places and then activating and attuning them. And so uh, I typically bring like a lot and then I would release them and then save 12 for each set for each chakra because each portal, depending on the different alignment dates, like Lionsgate portal, the stars align, the, the moon, like everything aligns and this vortex of energy comes through. And I bring it down to these large activation sites. And so having those energy around, it's uh, it's uh, much more intense than probably a regular Moldavite. Like you'll feel it intensely once you get one of these uh, activated Moldavites. And I don't release that many. Uh, only when I get called to do an activation, I'll get some extra and then I'll do pre-sales. Although I am recently, I I feel like I will bring a set down to um, Kathmandu or Nepal. And that will be for the crown chakra. So we'll see when that trip comes through. Uh, but that is something down toward uh, down the line. Okay, so now let's get back to palisite. Now, you know, when we're working with different uh, meteorites or different tectites, space stones, if something just doesn't resonate, doesn't connect with you, then you just won't use it. Same with any crystal. So Moldavite was the one that just resonated with me. Like it was a pull where you can't stop thinking about it. You can't stop working with it. Like you just want to get more Moldavite. And of course, we know work with Moldavite. It's it's an accelerated path, right? Whatever we haven't addressed will come to the surface for us to, to work through uh, and release it. And so... Uh, Palisite never really resonated prior. I have a piece of Libyan desert glass. I mean, it came through, but I just don't feel called to use it. So it's been sitting in uh, in my crystal box for some time. I rarely, it rarely comes out. I also have a piece of uh, a cube of what's it called Munya Lausa meteorite. I think a hundred and something grams. I don't get feel called to use that. Now that piece specifically, I work for soul retrieval. So whenever there's like a huge opening, I bring that out for some kind of soul retriever energy. Uh, it's it's a, it's like a, a matrix cube. But that when that one, when you bring it out, like people around me get headaches, okay? So with space stones, we have to be able to hold the frequency. There has to be something active within in us or we've one only come to us when there's something that's resonating with it that's bringing it into our reality right if you're getting pulled to moldavite there's something within you that is resonating with moldavite right or perhaps you've asked for transformation or clarity on your purpose this is typically a time when moldavite comes through it is a stone of transformation and so uh yeah the last five years no other space zones really resonate except with Moldavite. Now, 
when I've completed this uh, activations with the different chakras, palisite came through. And what was interesting with uh, palisite, so palisite energy is a lot softer. It's a lot more grounding than moldavite. I try researching on the internet on what people experience. People don't really talk much about it. So my next path here is really to introduce palisite with moldavite. I do feel like palisite is the next level after moldavite because we're talking about not just tectite, right? Moldavite is uh, half earth and half space. It's from a meter impact. So there's earth substance and it's half space substance. Now when we're tapping into the meteorite realm, they're all space energy. And so your body has to be able to hold that frequency to be outside of this earthly realm. Does it make sense? Like, and that's clearing our body as a vessel to be a clear vessel. Because imagine if you're going out into space, you have to unload a lot of slow, stagnant energy. Okay, so uh, palisite's energy is to heal the heart. Also resonates with the third eye chakra. And it's for manifestation abundance. It's also more grounding than Moldavite. And so uh, Palisite was when I first picked up this soulmate energy. Now, Moldavite, there was this period of twin flame, okay? Remember, Moldavite goes up to 15 million years old. When we're tapping into Palisite, it's going up to 3.5 billion years back. So this is a much older connection. And uh, it is one of the oldest meteorite yet to be found on Earth. And, and so I want to share a couple experiences with, uh, you know, what happened in my reality when this Palestine energy started coming through. So around, um, around Chinese New Year this year, around mid-February, I was sitting down talking to my business, right? Seeing where the business wants to go. At that point, when the Moldavites were starting to vibrate out and the Palisite piece came through, it seems like the Palisite energy and the Moldavite energy was clashing. It, it just it just didn't resonate with each other. And so I wasn't even sure if I was still working with Moldavite anymore. It was kind of like this uh, numbness phase, right? When you invested your whole life in something. Well, first, I another feeling I had this when I, when I left my financial advising career. Uh, like seven years invested in that career, got all my certification license, and then just left it, left everything behind. And then the last five five years, I just studied Moldavite, really, went really deep into Moldavite. And then just recently, it's like, oh my gosh, Moldavite is vibrating out. What am I going to do now? And so... You know, there was this download that came through is to integrate the two, which I had that training, but I wasn't getting too much clarity on how to go about it. And uh, so I was working on my business plan. I sat there for a week, mapping out, you know, how to connect all these dots. And in the financial planning world, it's all about planning. But what I've realized is if when you're not in alignment with source, we're not in alignment, we're not getting clarity, it's uh, we can take a lot of actions, but if we don't line up the energy first, these actions can take us down this different path, a different timeline. And then that's why we realize like, ah, oh, I'm going in this loop that I can't seem to break out of, okay? And so I sat there for like a week or two weeks. I can't figure out where this business wants to go. It's like, it was stagnant. And so I asked Source, I meditated, I was like, look, I need some clarity. I, I want clarity. I want full alignment with Source. And I want stability. Like working with so much Moldavite, I say I would have about seven, 800 grams of activated Moldavites. It was very undergrounding because every new set that came through, whatever I was working on, just like left the energy field, new people came through, new projects came through, new training came through, right? At first I was doing a lot of past life work. And then the second phase, like a lot of access consciousness work. And then, uh, 
the re most recent one was Reiki, getting, getting my Reiki masters and doing the healing on that. And so it, it just, everything happened really fast. And I, uh, you know, it's interesting, like all the things we learned, all the things that I've learned, I thought I was gonna integrate it. Like at first I thought I was gonna be a healer. Uh, but recently I really thought, I said, man, am I gonna really just hone in on this Reiki thing? But I realized is the Reiki came through is for me to heal within myself and accelerate right right when the past life training came through it was to heal my own past life not so much uh heal others but just really heal within myself because the moldavite was accelerating me so fast that it needed an outlet all these energy that was coming up so fast need an outlet to leave and if i can't figure it out then it's going to keep repeating and so all these different learning and training is to heal within myself first and then, uh, and then I feel like this next phase is when they're all going to integrate with each other, which is, uh, which is very fascinating because I'm getting a lot more clarity on where the business wants to evolve to. So where it led me to was when I was sitting there, I couldn't figure out where the business, it was just like this numbness feeling of, okay, what's next? And what was next is I was being called to uh, listen to Abraham Hicks uh, videos on YouTube, like really learn the law of attraction. Now, many of you tuning in, if you're into this uh, spiritual self-help work, chances are you probably dabbled into Abraham Hicks teaching. When I first went through my awakening, Abraham was the first person that I have uh, came across that really got me into like, Wow, learning about the secret, the law of attraction, tapping into the spirituality work. What was interesting is when I, then everything she tells so general that it didn't really work. Uh, and then I kind of vibrated out and then like learned something else, which is fine because it's all coming back full circle. What I do know about Abraham listening now from a different uh, space than I was than before is Oh, she is channeling in a, a higher space of consciousness. A lot of what she says, when I integrate it with all this, the work that I've done, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Now, I feel like there's some, it could be very general or a lot of, uh, you may not understand what she's trying to say. I feel like I've navigated through some of that that can help us easier understand how to do this work, right? For example, she mentioned, um, you know, when these, Focus on the pure positive thoughts, like always be in the feeling of feeling good. Whenever something doesn't make you feel good, let it stay dormant. Like go to sleep, uh, don't think about it, don't talk about it, restart the next day, right? Always try to be on this high flying disc. However, I find a challenge with that is when you work with Moldavite, oh, these emotions, right? This negative energy, it's coming up fast. And if, uh, if we don't acknowledge it, we don't clear it, it's going to keep repeating. And there's, I mean, either you release it or really, really train not to, uh, to let it stay dormant basically, or not to activate it. So I find that part a little bit challenging for those who are working with Moldavite, trying to ignore these, uh, negative emotions that are coming up. So the thing that she mentioned about these negative emotions, right? These are active in our, in our, uh, in a vibration, that's why it's coming up. It, they're triggers. All these are emotions. And uh, the thing with past life, right? Past life connections come through. It's to show us what's still active within our vibration. But it all hones down to a different emotion, a feeling that's still stuck within our body. And so once we hone down on what it is because it may show up through past life it may show up in this present life but it's all the same it's this emotion that we haven't released right and there's emotional scale so these lower emotions of shame uh, abandonment rejection uh you know all these low vibrational energy that keeps our body in a lower denser vibration remember because if we're working with these higher vibrational stones the meteorite we're going to need to unload a lot of this low vibrational oops, unload all of these low vibrations from the body to really vibrate a higher frequency make sense or shifting out of this old dense reality 
and that part of it is our body. So uh, are you guys getting this? Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to kind of merge the two. But uh, so I noticed when I was working with that, whatever came up for me really fast rather than suppressing it, one, an easier way for me to do it is I just disconnect, right? I first won't acknowledge or I won't continue those conversations uh, or circumstance or events that just makes me feel not happy. So I try my best to disconnect and then I rake myself, clear those energies as it came up because there's, it's going to work with Moldavite is hundred percent. It's going to come up very fast. So how I go around that rather than suppressing it is clearing it out of my body through Reiki. Last month I've been focused on pure positive energy, just really being in this high flying disc, like happy. And again, no Moldavites are out, only the palace site. And so I want to share a couple of experience with the palace site. Palace site is, uh, all about manifestation and abundance. Okay, you guys are probably gonna love this. Okay, I randomly posted this video, uh, this reel on my Facebook. And out of nowhere, it blew up to 19 million views within like two weeks. And I got a thousand dollar bonus from the Facebook Reels bonus on Facebook. Like this magically out of nowhere just appeared. And uh, like a month later, they, they stopped doing the, uh, the real bonus anymore. So I managed to catch it at the very last moment and I maxed it out at a thousand bucks. I think you're only, this capped out $500 a month, but for some reason I got like a thousand dollars. So that blossomed out of nowhere. And then, uh, I was thinking like, okay, I need a new photo shoot or, uh, this new branding photo shoot, but I wasn't sure which photographer. And then all of a sudden, my, my friend messaged me and like asking about, hey, what do you think about these photos? Because she was doing branding. And so I asked, well, I probably need some new branding photos. And she's like, well, why don't we collaborate? I'll do it for free. So boom, <laughs> I got a free business photo shoot. And uh, what was interesting is, you know, I had an 89 gram piece of palace site, right? I haven't really been carrying it around, but that day, I usually wear Moldavite on my photo shoots, but that day is like no Moldavites want to come out. So I put that piece of palisite in my purse. And the whole week leading up to the photo shoot, she was pretty booked the whole week, but the whole week it rained. So she can't sew a few sessions. And then on our day, it was like bright and sunny. And so we took the photos and it was, you know, that moment when like everything aligns and it's like, did we really take this photo? Like everything was just lined so perfectly. And uh, here's a photo of it, right? But what's interesting is, you know, this shot at that right in the hallway, that one specific spot felt like the timeline of this future version of me, classy, fancy business Tammy, was right in that moment. And that was when our timeline merged from old Tammy to new Tammy. God, every time I talk about it, I get goosebumps, right? Because when I look at this photo, I'm like, that is future Tammy. That is another version of me in a different timeline. So I, uh, I love my photographer. She always mentioned, she always tends to capture this like future version, like really wealthy version of myself uh, in her shoots. And so, yeah, so that came through. And then, uh, but yeah, and then later in the evening, she mentioned they had another photo shoot. A photo shoot and it was like hot and it was a uh, sweating and it was not as smooth as what happened with us in the morning and it felt like everything was so divinely like the energy was so perfect when we went out for our photo shoot and could you not the whole week it was raining except that day all right the next event that happened with the palace site so again uh so this one a new piece came through so this whole month of me trying to be at this pure positive energy, this piece came through. And uh, once you're active, you active in one certain emotions, when you are honed in on that, then I feel like the palace that will come through for you. So this piece is always, I get really happy and joyful with this piece. So today uh, I went to the DPS. My driver license expired and uh, it, I had to go in to retake a photo to renew my license. So many of us know the energy at the DPS is not 
pleasing. <laughs> but today I went and uh, no wait. Literally, I was in and out in 20 minutes. Uh, the lady was really nice. She let me take my photo three times until I satisfied. Three times. And then she was really happy. And then when I came through, she, uh, when I came to the counter, she said, man, I feel like something's really hot. Like I'm getting really hot flashes. I really think it's some kind of like the, the palace of energy. It's, it's, it's powerful, okay? And the person wearing it has to be able to resonate or hold that frequency constant. And so, uh, but yeah, it's, it was a pretty amazing experience at the DPS. So I got my license renewed within under 20 minutes. Okay, so on the drive back, okay, so Abraham Hick talks about this vacuum, right? You want to clean out the house, you want to do whatever you do, make sure the vacuum is plugged in. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time, basically. So that's a metaphor for before you do anything, make sure you get aligned and connected to source. Otherwise, it's going to be like a waste of effort. You can do all the action, but if you're not in alignment, I mean, you're going to create more work for yourself. So that metaphor always resonated with me, like plug in, get connected with source first. And that is staying in this pure positive energy, staying in alignment, getting in tune, and then take the action, inspired action. So on the way home, I read the license plate in front of me was the plug. <laughs> so that was confirmation that tapped in, tuned in, and connected to source. Okay, but I want to share about that, about Palisite. I don't see a lot of people sharing about Palisite. So uh, what's next is for me to start talking about Palisite, start incorporating this energy into my business, bringing this through. And so moving forward, I'm going to do more business coaching, helping uh, you know a lot of us who work through ourselves to bring out this work into the business world, right? That's where I'm feeling I'm heading towards. Okay, that being said, I'm gonna do a couple of pre-sales for Palace Site. Uh, you can buy the pre-sales. I'm gonna go kind of tune into your piece. They'll look mostly like this. Connect to your energy, kind of can find you your piece and then when it comes through, I'm gonna clear it, Reiki attunement energy, clearing the energy as much as I can through the Reiki attunement. Right, remember this goes back to 3.5 billion years. So the Reiki attunement will go back to the Reiki lineage and clear whatever energy comes up. And then, uh, yeah, that's how I'm gonna start distributing the palisite as the next step after Moldavite. But look how pretty they are. So this one is confidence. So Tune in. If you're being called towards a palace and you want to get it through me, uh, once I get it here, I'll cleanse it, break it, tune it, and then when it's ready, give it about two, three weeks, and then I'll send it towards your way. But you can start buying pre-sale now. I'll activate it here, and then uh, welcome to the next level. I love the energy palace site, so uh, we'll see where this leads next. But uh, that's all I have for everyone here today. I hope you are doing well, and uh, yeah, go check it out. Inspiration is in my description below. Uh, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next episode. Welcome back. Timmy Do, signing off.